Hello and welcome to our worship on this um, rather pleasant uh, summer's morning as I'm recording this. Um, the weather is warm but not too hot, uh, there's a bit of a breeze but you get the feeling there might be some rain on the way, a kind of typical British summer's day really. It's the ninth Sunday after Trinity, we celebrated James last week, we're back to our normal kind of run of, um, of Sundays, um, but of course this is going to be the last one for two weeks, I'm away next week um, on holiday, so there'll be one uh, for the 15th of, um, of um, August, not one for the 8th. Our opening responses. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. May Christ the day star dawn in our hearts, and triumph over the shades of night. Blessed are you, Creator God, to you be praise and glory forever. You founded the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. As we rejoice in the gift of your presence among us, let the light of your love always shine in our hearts. Your Spirit ever renew our lives, and your praises ever be on our lips. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Our opening hymn then today is Son of God, Eternal Saviour, written by S.C. Lowry, and the tune Everton by um, Henry Smart. Source of God, Eternal Saviour, source of life and truth and grace, Son of Man, whose birth incarnate hallows all our human race.
first reading then from the book of Exodus. The reading is taken from the book of Exodus, chapter 16, verses 2 to 4 and 9 to 15. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we have died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them, whether they will follow my instruction or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked towards the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, it is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second hymn is a more modern hymn written by um, Susan Tulin, a Catholic nun. I am the bread of life. She wrote the tune as well. Um, and it has that wonderful phrase, I will raise you up and I will raise you up and I will raise you up on the last day. As we sing, I am the bread of life.
our Gospel reading from St John. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The Gospel is taken from St John's Gospel, chapter 6, beginning at verse 24. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were at the place where Jesus had given the bread, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you, for it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What, was, what must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors at the manna in the wilderness, as it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Both readings today pick up on that theme of feeding the hungry. And there are two, but two different ways in which that story comes about. If we go back to the book of Exodus and to, um, to Moses hearing the complaints of the people of Israel on their journey, um, you can understand why they're having a bit of a whinge. They've come from the banks of the Nile, and if you've anybody has been to that part of the world, they know what it's like. The, um, the world is, um, is very dry, and then you get to the Nile and it's very fertile. The world is very hot, you get to the Nile and there's water. So it's pretty obvious that there's a whole kind of uh, interesting di uh, uh, kind of contrast here, isn't there, between what happened before when we were slaves but it was a nice place to be and here we are out in the wilderness trying to work out our own way and it's pretty tough and horrible and we're struggling for food and for water and um, it's quite easy to see why people get irritated so what does moses do about this well moses brings obviously the complaint to the lord and the lord provides this is the other flip side of it, isn't it? Um, this is the flip side of, it's not like if you complain, you'll get what you want. Because <laughs> he could have just given them, you know, something less tasty, I guess. But actually the flip side is that if the Lord is going to bring the people of Israel out, the Lord God, by the show of force, by all the um, uh, plagues that struck Israel, Egypt, that had won Israel its freedom, then he has a responsibility to ensure that they are fed in their journey before they get to the promised land. And there are two things, aren't there? There's quail and then there's manna. And that manna has a kind of mystical quality to it, doesn't it? They're not sure what to make of it. Quail, yeah, yeah, we know what birds are like. And if you go again into the desert, sometimes you will come across flocks of quail. They'll be around an oasis or they'll fly from one place to another and you'll see them. Um, uh, so that's a kind of kind of natural thing but this manner this kind of strange stuff that they gather is kind of quite weird isn't it and, and they don't know what to make of it and they're not quite sure but they recognize it being holy it is the bread that the lord has given you to eat 
and there's a little bit further on in the story about them collecting enough those who collected too much because they went round thinking they could store it it all went maggoty and smelly and horrible <laughs> you know so it's a very interesting kind of uh, uh kind of statement about taking only what you need now as a people who were a once a, a, a migrant people who were once a kind of shepherding people who would wander around looking for uh, uh, feed for their goats and sheep but then became settled in Egypt it's a reminder of where they've come from that actually the ecosystem in which they're based will only take so much I'm not quite sure whether the lesson would they learn the lesson or not but perhaps they uh, perhaps they did perhaps they didn't but it's also a lesson in the Lord providing the Lord provides for them when we get then to the gospel reading we see again a people in need people in need of sustenance jesus is the provider of something wonderful this bread uh, that has come that they've tasted they want more of and so they rush round to find it they go around the other side of the lake and then they wonder how would jesus got there because when they left him he was over there and they could see where he was going but he's not quite sure where he how he got there and um there's a little bit earlier in the story about jesus walking across the across the water isn't there why do you perform um what must we do to perform the works of god so we can earn this reward you know it's a kind of um simple kind of oh yeah if we do this this is the reward we get um and most of the time life works like that doesn't it you know if you um if you work hard at your job then you get your salary or you get your pay or whatever but of course it doesn't always work that way because actually sometimes we're part of a team and if there are members of the team who are working harder or members of the team who are slacking sometimes the whole team benefits doesn't it it's you know human nature <laughs> is in here as well so they want this bread but jesus is trying to lead them on as john always does in his gospel he tries to lead them on to the next stage it's not just about bread for the body it's about food for the soul what is going on here is actually jesus saying walk with me and not only will you be fed physically but you'll be fed spiritually and you will grow and that to me is a kind of a, a, a kind of big thing that's going on here i am the bread of life says jesus whoever comes to me i will never be hungry whoever believes in me will never be thirsty now he's not talking about the physical hunger that that will continue absolutely but he is talking about the spiritual hunger we find in jesus all that meets our spiritual needs now that can be quite difficult can't it because sometimes we can feel quite disconnected from God in prayer um, we can feel quite alone in the world because of disaster or something that struck us or struck our family and yet here is Jesus saying no come and walk with me and you will be fed and we can take that to a kind of a bit of a logical extreme i guess in the eucharist the idea of the bread and the wine which we're sort of getting back to sharing again kind of bit by bit but also taking it into our world because actually when do we feed others having been fed ourselves is there a situation we find ourselves in this week for example when we recognize that something we've prayed about or something we've absorbed from this sermon or the readings or from the service we were watching oh i can lose that yeah in that conversation i'm gonna have you know i have with so and so oh that idea that i heard on sunday i can just push push you know drop it into the conversation helping them feeding them being a pastor to them to provide them with wonderful kind of uh, uh, spiritual insights we're not all going to be doing it all the time it's not always going to go really well is it but if we don't talk about the things spiritual and the feeding of the soul we're not going to have a generation of people who understand that they're going to seek something else and 
one of the things that we've learned over the centuries of Christian church is that there are a myriad ways to worship a myriad ways to feed our soul everything from happy clappy charismatic wave your arms in the air which is not me but you know some people to a regular diet of morning and evening prayer and and praying to a very eucharistic centered um to a very spiritually reflective centered life there's a whole spectrum of christian thought and practice out there and what we've got to do is help people find it and in finding it they'll find jesus and they'll find god and that's our missionary role because they're being fed then aren't they they're being given something which feeds their souls which you know as jesus says i am the bread of life whoever comes to me will never be hungry whoever believes in me will never be thirsty we will find them um, and help them and encourage them to grow their spiritual life amen so to our affirmation of faith do you believe and trust in god the father i believe in god the father almighty creator of heaven and earth do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our third hymn today then is by the um, hymn writer James Montgomery who lived in the 1770s to 1854. He wrote quite a number of hymns which kind of managed to uh, stay in our hymn books. This is Shepherd of Souls, Refresh and Bless Your Chosen Pilgrim Flock. Um, the tune is Martyrdom. So we come to our prayers today, praying for ourselves, for our world, 
and especially we pray for those who are working to make the world more sustainable. We're all in a situation where we're recognizing that the damage done to the planet is starting to, um, to be uh, recognized and noticed. And so we all have a choice, I think, don't we, about how we change and challenge that. So let us pray. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father for the peace of the whole world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, for the unity of all. Especially at this time, we pray that we may recognise that we have to support our environment and not just exploit it, that we may, as a world, work together. Pray for the role of the church here as well, that it may be seen as a place of reconciliation, of hope, but also of challenge as we care for God's creation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Richard, our bishop, for the leaders of our sister churches, for all clergy and people. We pray perhaps for the church that we would normally attend if we weren't watching this, for the people there that we miss for the chances we have to meet up with them again as we come out of a post-pandemic lockdown. Pray too for ourselves and for our communities, for the role of the church in those communities and the way in which communities and churches should work together. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Elizabeth, our Queen, for the leaders of the nations, for all in authority. We pray especially for that which unifies us, brings us together. As we pray for the success of the Olympics and the fact that we are a united world through sport. So we are reminded of the things that also divide us in terms of wealth and um, resources and the way in which actually we need to work together to shape this world to make it more sustainable. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this community, for every city, town and village, for all the people who live within them. Pray for our streets, for all those who are part of our communities. They've been under such stress over this lockdown period and now as we re-establish ourselves we pray for their strengthening and that we will value them, that we will see them as important in our lives and in everyone's life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For good weather and for abundant harvests for all to share. Pray for all those who farm, for those who farm just a small amount or perhaps quite a large amount. And we pray especially for our farmers here in South Herefordshire, for them as they begin to bring in their crops, for them as they care for their livestock. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel by land, air and water, especially those going on holiday at this time, they may find time and place to reflect and renew and recharge. For the sick and the suffering, for those in hospital or our care homes, for those at home, for those worried about the um, new freedoms and whether they'll be able to go out, for all who are struggling with their mental health, for prisoners and captives, for their safety, health and salvation. And especially for all those who are in prison and the prison officers who are there to look after them and guide them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, strife and need, and for the absolution of our sins and offences, or our falling short of what God wants us to be and the chance to start again. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remembering those who have gone before us in faith, in communion with all the saints. Give thanks for the lives of those who've shaped our lives, for the love we've received. We pray for them as they rest in the light and peace of Christ. So we commit ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our God, to you, O Lord. Amen. And so to our collect for this ninth Sunday after Trinity. 
Almighty God, who sent your Son, sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church, open our hearts to the riches of his grace, that we may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in love and joy and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so to the peace. We are all one in Christ Jesus. We belong to him through faith, heirs of the promise of the spirit of peace. And the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Peace be with you and all those in your household today. So to our final hymn then, we um, sing that wonderful hymn, Guide Me, O Thou Great Redeemer, uh, written originally in Welsh by William Williams and then translated by William and Peter Williams. Um, but the tune is, um, is actually uh, a bit newer than the hymn. Come Ronda uh, was written by John Hughes, who lived from 1873 to 1932, um, and he wrote that, the tune to fit these, uh, these lovely words. But it's got that wonderful refrain, hasn't it? Bread of heaven, feed me now and evermore picking up on our theme today of Bread of Life. So to our closing blessing, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. 
Thank you very much for being with us for our worship today. Um, do hope you enjoyed the service. As I say, no service uh, next week um, as when we're away. Uh, we'll be running back in two weeks. And so uh, if you uh, want to follow us on um, the subscription on YouTube, you can do so. Look for Reverend Mark Wimelow 100 Benefits on YouTube. And then there's a little subscribe button and a little thing to ding as well. Um, and if you wish to give some money, then there's a little link there for you to uh, give a donation to support the work of the Wimelow 100 Benefits benefits. Take care of yourselves and one another and we'll see you in two weeks. Goodbye.